Let's start the show now. It's time to let go. Have you and your girlfriend been watching a geeky comic book show together lately? Well, then you've probably been watching The Boys or maybe Flash on CW. Either way, it's probably coming to a halt because there was a porn parody in episode seven. Say what? I've seen the screener for episode seven and we're gonna dive deep and talk about it. But real quick, I just wanna remind you guys, we have a giveaway going on. You can win a $50 Amazon gift card. All you gotta do is subscribe, like this video and comment. Boom, you're entered for a $50 gift card. Say what? Also, all you gotta do is come to the stream on October 30th to find out who won. Say what? There's not a lot of people entered right now, so you have a really good shot at winning. And if you do multiple entries, I'm telling you, you're a shoe in I would know. They're my videos. Okay. Anyways, let's talk about the boys. When did I become Shooter McGavin? Episode 7 kicks off with a dark mood, so if you were looking for something exciting or something happy, I'm sorry, this isn't going to be the opening for you. It's a very dark and somber mood because you not only are seeing the reactions that people are having to Vaude and to Homelander and Stormfront, but you're also seeing the ramifications of Vaude and how it's playing out in the public. It's a lot like, and I hate to make this comparison, it's a lot like the world that we live in now. Everything is politicized, everything is real polarized, and it's just really eerie how you don't know if art's mirroring life or life is mirroring art, but either way, it's it's real political in a way. All kinds of propaganda and with soups like Homelander and Stormfront, you have people that love the limelight. So it just is this perfect mix of trouble. Butcher is out of the funk that he was in. He is at his most butcheriness in this episode. He has a family meeting and the family member he meets with makes for a great interaction. It isn't a fun interaction between them, but it is entertaining for us, the viewers, to watch. Butcher seems to get angrier as episode seven goes on. Even though his family member is played by a very well-known actor, you get to see why Butcher is so butchery. You can't help but feel sorry for him after this interaction. Or at the very least, you can understand him more. Black Noir is another awesome element in this episode. Starlight, Black Noir, and Maeve have an action scene together. I wish it could have been longer, but it's fun to see them have this incredible, incredible scene together. We get to see all three do incredible things. They all kind of have their moments. Not only do we get to see the characters interact, but we also get to see their storylines weave in and out. And it's just really great to see. Speaking of Maeve, you get a feeling that she is a good person that is trapped in a really bad situation and just trying to get out. On the Vought front, there is finally a plan to end them. It definitely has, again, that Ocean's Eleven vibe that... We talked about in the last episode as far as the plotting and the planning is concerned trying to finally do something about them congress is getting involved with vod and compound v and it's you can see stuff coming together and the future of vod does not look promising if these things come to fruition huey has a scene where he is learning to be stronger you continue to see him growing there's a moment where he decides he is going to do something huge and he does it. And because of it, it is definitely something that needed to happen. I wish I could say more, but because of the Amazon embargo, I can't. But watch out for it. You guys will know what I'm talking about. You'll see. Huey and Lamplighter share some very memorable scenes together. And as with episode six, how you saw that Lamplighter was shining and there were bits of light because hey he might be a good person well with episode seven he takes a step back in the darkness so to speak the phrase two steps forward and one step back comes to mind or is it one step forward and two steps back either way he definitely takes a step back in this episode speaking of growing we finally get to see frenchie and kimiko getting along better and growing, coming together in some ways, which is really nice. Speaking of team-ups, I also love seeing the Deep and A-Train now both part of the Church of the Collective. It makes for something really fun. 
team-ups. You've also got Homelander and Stormfront together again, and they are honestly the most evil characters on this show. Maybe on any show. Just saying. They are more united now than ever, and you just know season three is going to bring big trouble for anyone crossing their paths. There is a scene with Homelander and his son, and that goes well until it doesn't. Okay, it, it doesn't go well at all. Because he's got a kid's life he wants to run. I, I mean parent. He wants to parent. Yeah, right. And why he goes back there, you'll see, but it's so damn tense. And the tension roller coaster of how Homelander and Stormfront impact anyone, and I mean anyone, just keeps getting ramped up. Outside of horror movies, I really don't recall ever having this much tension watching something. The final scene in this episode, it's definitely a cliffhanger. After seeing this episode, I can say that The Boys follows in the tradition of well-written and well-produced comic book adapted shows like Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist. Ugh. Two out of three ain't bad. Go team! Seriously, it's some of the best television in all of the television. And oh yeah, there's a porn parody in this world and it's weird and it's strange to see, but hey, you get to see it and the fun reaction it gets, it's definitely worth it. One more bit of brief news that's related to The Boys. The Boys is getting a spinoff. This is according to Variety. We're going to talk about that real quick. It is described as an R-rated series that explores the lives of hormonal competitive soups as they put their physical, sexual, and moral boundaries to the test, competing for the best contracts in the best cities. Part college show, part Hunger Games, with all the heart and satire of The Boys. As of right now, we have no date as to when this series will manifest, but if we're doing the Walking Dead model, it will probably be whenever The Boys is not airing. So in that case, it would probably either be spring or summer. So I would say that summer 2021 may not be out of the question, depending on how fast production can go and serve up The Boys Season 3, similar how Fear the Walking Dead was led into The Walking Dead. And, you know, that's before the pandemic totally screwed up all the releases for everything. I still want to see the Batman. Oh, and one more thing. Enjoy the porn. There's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. I will see you next time.